Hey, Brian, welcome back to Moto BS. Episode two. Episode two. Yeah. We had such a good time doing the first one. We thought we'd keep going with it. Yeah. Change shirts and jump on back. <laughs> yeah, right. It's actually the same. No, it's not. <laughs> the same day. Same day. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah, not. Yeah. Hopefully, I fixed the microphone issue. I know that the mics were a little hot last time, so we had a couple of uh, glass clings. That a couple of glass. We got a table this time, so little we're, improvements. We're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Little improvements. Yeah. I like your hat, man. Thank you. Where do you get those? Uh, this one I ordered online from a hat store. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hats.com or... Hat store. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right? Yeah, that is yeah. a good idea. Not a haberdashery. Yeah, so last week we talked about uh, tents and camping. Right. Motorcycle camping. And so all week, every time I open my phone up, I would have an ad in there for motorcycle tents. So now this week, you're going to open your phone. You're going to have plenty of... Plenty of options. Ads. Yeah, you're going to be like, oh, that's where he gets the hats. Right there. I need one for the DGR. Yeah. I need a cool hat. Yeah. You could save a lot of money on your haircuts if you just got a hat. Hmm. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Thinking economically. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like this it. hat here, you could get like three of these hats for one of your haircuts. Is it tweed? Uh, or no, like, uh, what do they call it? Just a straw hat? It, it's not straw. I think this one's probably... It's uh, Bailey's of Hollywood. I don't know. But uh, Cuban style, is that what they call those? Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Well, we're well, going to talk a little bit about fashion today. Sure. Motorcycle fashion, though. Right. Because I don't really know much, you know, I'm not much into the, like, regular fashion world. Yeah, we can tell. <laughs> As you can tell. <laughs> My mom laughed at me the other day because I, I had new jeans that had all the, the rips in them, you know? And she yeah. was like... Do you need new jeans? I said, Mom, I just got these things. They're yeah, brand I mean, new. I paid double for these. <laughs> or some poor kid somewhere with a, a razor knife fixing your jeans for you. Designer cuts, man. Yeah. Designer yeah. cuts. But I thought we'd talk a little bit about... Um, you mentioned in the first episode about all the subgenres of motorcycling. Yeah. And a lot of those subgenres not only pertain to the motorcycles themselves and what they can do but the different cultures too but the different cultures right and what goes along with that as far as fashion yeah and uh style, style. aesthetics culture right? right that whole thing right like you're a triumph guy but but you didn't used to be a triumph guy right no i was a i was a squid yeah i knew very little about gear i mean i did wear a helmet but um, I, I rode a Jixer before I went, got into the Triumph world and, um, yeah, at a certain point though, you start getting a little bit, a little bit older and you're just like, I don't think I want to be leaned over. Although you, you really didn't solve that with your new bike. It definitely, no, I am a sport bike guy for sure. But I'm saying now you're riding a Thruxton, so yeah. you're, you're still, still, you're still not bent comfortable. Over. Yeah. Still bent over. <laughs> still not comfortable. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Sometimes I th I'm on the way home from long rides. I'm like, why do I do this to myself? Right. There are more comfortable motorcycles, which I'm, I digress, but it's probably one of the reasons they just got rid of the Thruxton. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure that people that were looking for sport bikes are not necessarily looking to embrace the the culture of of classics right you know? yeah 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 so it's, it's kind it's, of it's a beautiful bike but it is but it's really a not, little too niche yeah and right? it, yeah it's it's not like it's not really a true sport bike right and it's and, and you know you can get that classic look and be more comfortable on a bonneville or a or the new uh street twins or yeah or even the a bobber, yeah, a bobber, cool. or even any of the um, like the Kawasaki has that mm -hmm. the nine hundred that's a cafe racer. Yeah, there's that's a very few cool looking retro and and more comfortable because you're still more upright. Yep. Yeah, and those have pretty good power. I, it still hurts. It's something I carry with me. I was watching the um, uh, Zach on Revzilla mm -hmm. when he does the the commute. What's his episode? Oh, what is he yeah, called? yeah, Daily Rider. Daily Rider, which I love those episodes. They're fantastic. Yeah, right? except when he's bagging on your bike, then it's not so fun. <laughs> well, that's what I, I mean. It still hurts. It's been like five years now, yeah. and he did he did a Thruxton R uh -huh. Daily Rider episode, and for the most part, he was he was pleased with it. But he said it was uh, basically he said something like uh, it's a sports bike with a cruiser engine, and. I had the little tear yeah. come down my cheek. Yeah, I, like, I feel it. Yeah, I, I watched this episode on the Tracer, and uh, 
it was funny because obviously when you own the bike, you know all the little intricacies. And he was, there's a little quick shifter light on there letting you know it's safe to quick shift. But he thought it was telling him that it wanted him to shift. So he kept shifting and he was all the way in sixth gear going like 30 miles an hour. And he's like, why did he keep wanting me to shift? I'm like, it doesn't want you to shift. It's telling you you can shift. Oh, right. Okay, so yeah. yeah, there's are things you notice when you actually own the bike. And they're it. going, this, he's like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I was like, well, if you read the manual, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, and he didn't put the thrust in his sport mode, which is another thing that, uh, you know. Yeah. Zach, if you're watching, if you're listening to this, go yeah. back and do a thrust. You know. <laughs> Did he wheelie it? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. I mean, it will he, wheel. he's impressive because he can wheelie just about anything. Yeah. Yeah. And back almost anything in, too. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it doesn't have the trash control or, um, yeah. But good stuff. Good stuff. But, you know, back to the, back to the style and, and aesthetics of riding, too. Right. We all, I think for the most part, no matter what genre of bike you pick, you fall into those kind of sub categories. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right? there's a reason why there's stereotypes. Like if you meet a Harley guy, he's going to be wearing, you know, the vest, he's going to have the, the leather braid hanging from, I, I don't know what that's about, but I, you know, a lot of them have that and they've got, you know, and it's all Harley branded. That's yeah, everything is Harley brand. Honestly, Harley has kind of become. It's basically a clothing store that they sell motorcycles out of. When you go in there, yeah. they're, they're these giant mega stores now, and they've got, you know, they got baby onesies in there, and you know, like a full lineup bathing suits, whatever you can oh, think sure. of. Yeah, anything you can think of. Koozie, anything Harley, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, all the brands have gear, Coolers. obviously, but right. but theirs, their stores are massive. I mean, they're like Walmart size. It really is a phenom- a cultural phenomenon, what they've created and it how is. it's evolved. And and to be fair to them, they have started like making better motorcycles because for a while they're you know they had a reputation of not being reliable and kind of being rough to ride but yeah. i think i have some friends with harleys and they love them and you know if you're especially if you're going to do like a long tour it's a comfortable bike it's got plenty of i mean it's got so much torque because the engines are so huge well and they're also able to they've engineered the soul and character of harley davison into this bike no matter right. what year it is amf period aside but think about the bikes for the last 25 years there every one of them has that d and that harley dna right 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 um so yeah i'm not i'm not a i'm not gonna bash harley i think everybody's no but i'm saying they i mean they have that they have that style they have that style and then you know you have your triumph brand which obviously triumph makes sport bikes as well and they make they make naked bikes and they make adventure bikes but the majority i think of their sales are probably in their classic line you know, when I think of it, like when I think in my mind, motorcycle, like if I'm trying to picture a motorcycle, mm-hmm. I picture like a Bonneville. Like if you see an outline of a motorcycle, it's usually like a, like a standard motorcycle. Yeah. That's what it is, you know? Right. Um, Ask a child to draw a motorcycle. Exactly. And they're going to, they're going to, they're going <laughs> to draw probably like something that looks like a, like a Bonneville. Right. A yeah. standard motorcycle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and of course, when you, when you have that kind of bike, you're looking for, aesthetics more than you are uh performance right because you know i mean look how i'm I'm dressed like a guy who's riding a bonneville even though i don't ride a bonneville anymore you know i've got the little black jeans like yeah a bit of hipster a little bit yeah i mean and i embrace it i don't care you want to make fun of me go ahead well because i think it's authentic and that's where i I mean i wear this all the time even when i'm not riding yeah yeah so i mean i'm wearing a hat i got brown boots on and a brown belt and black jeans so and your boots are used like you've got the the, the oh, s- oh, yeah. shift selector mark on your yeah, boots. these from- aren't these aren't exclusively motorcycle boots so I've, I've worn that mark into them you know so it reminds me of back in the day and i i think where i'm where my thoughts are going are like posers posers versus authentic right persona right back in the day using a musical analogy um when grunge hit in the 90s yeah in my area everybody was running out and buying doc martin boots yes flannel shirts that they were tying around their waist you know everything was brand new and pristine yeah but the guys in seattle who started that they were going to the army surplus stores and buying this stuff because they couldn't afford anything else right it was right it was out of necessity and not gr- so much the, the style i so, think grunge was a reaction to hair metal too i mean yeah because five years before that everybody was wearing all the guys are wearing makeup and had teased hair you know, and I think yep. I think the pendulum just swung back the it other swung way. Swung back to a more organic thing. Yeah, yeah. I was impressed with Tampa Triumph. The first that was the first um, Triumph dealership I visited. Yeah, and 
I was really impressed when I walked in because it's like very boutique. It is. You know? Yeah, and it has a smell in there. Like you, it has a leather and motorcycle yeah, it's, smell. Yeah, it smells like oil in there. It's 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 it makes you want to buy a Triumph jacket and a Triumph motorcycle. It it, it did. It which worked. is their goal. It, it worked. And yeah. we both did. I literally was I was on my way to look at like uh I'm so glad I didn't go this route, but I was look I was going to look at like a Honda seven hundred something just boring, basic. I mean, that was my plan when I got back into writing. I was just going to get something cheap and used. And I just hap- I was on my way to another dealership, and I, I was like, what is that? I didn't even know what I, – I didn't know. I mean, I, okay. was, I didn't know that they were making bikes to look like that now, you know, because the modern line had only been around for a few years at that point. I think they did it in 2010-ish or something yeah. when they started redoing right. them. But, but anyway, I pulled in there. I walked in that store and I was just like, oh my God, yeah. look at these bikes. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. And the whole character of the place, it was like, they had a black leather couch that you could, you know, yeah, chill yeah. out in and yeah, hang out. Everybody there was laid back and they're like, what's up, dude? You know, it was, it was very different than your typical, um, yeah. Like the girl that sold me my helmet, you know, she, she had sleeve tattoo and nose piercing. And I mean, all those people are gone now. It's been six, seven years ago, but um, yeah, the vibe right. in there. It, it was, was really cool. It was cool. Yeah. Made you want to, it made you want to subscribe to that whole lifestyle. And, and I'm glad I did because buying a bike there put me into the Triumph Riders group, which is where I met all the people that I know now. Right. Um, yeah. And, uh, and they encouraged that and, and helped to. Yeah. Like, I mean, it would be nothing to like swing by there on a Saturday and, you know, grab a coffee and just hang out in there, just shooting a breeze with the guys mm-hmm. that work there. And, and meeting other people as they come yeah, and Yeah, meeting other people that come in and then go, hey, you want to go for a ride and just take it off. And, and I mean, that's, that's the culture. That's what got me like so far into this now where I, I mean, I know hundreds of guys now that ride motorcycles. Yeah. I didn't know anybody eight years ago. And by contrast, you have like the power sport place. And I'm not, I'm not I don't want to bash on power sport dealerships, but right. A lot of these places sell, of course, they sell motorcycles, but they also sell things like jet skis, jet skis. And ATVs and things like that. And I, it's been my experience where you don't always get the salespeople that are really knowledgeable because they're selling a lot of different brands. Yeah. Like when I bought the Tracer, I went to a place in Orlando because they had the red one that I wanted. And I was asking a guy questions about it. And he was like going, oh, yeah. And then you could run a wire from the battery up here so you could plug your phone in. And I was like, well, there's a phone port right there. You know what I mean? Like, and then like the seat was wobbling and he was like, oh, that's how they're supposed to be. Well, I took it off and the grommets had fallen off of the thing, you know? So no, it's not how it's supposed to be. And it's like, he just, he was just making stuff up. And I'm like, he had told me, oh, that bike's been sitting in front of my desk for like six months. Right. I'm like, it sat there all that time and you don't know anything about it. Right. (laughs) So I guess, like you said, they're in there, they're. They're they're selling dirt bikes. They're selling jet skis, and uh, yeah, like you said, there's always offering. yeah the the uh, subject matter expert on a different right. Oh hey, I'm I'm looking for a, a Kawasaki. Oh well, they're over there. Right, that's the kind of experience right. I've had with them. But yeah. you kind of have to guide them. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you do your own research. You yeah, know, before you go in. I mean, I must have watched a thousand videos before I before I actually got this bike because you know I bought the first one on looks. And then a second one on looks in a little more performance. And then I got to the point where I really knew what I wanted by then, you know, right. you know, three, four years in, I'm like, oh, now I know what I want. And so, and obviously there's not as much of a, a culture with like, you know, Yamaha, which I have now. I mean, I had a hard time just finding like a Yamaha t-shirt, you know, that, that was, that didn't have the the boat colors because right. the boat they use the blue and the yeah the yellow yeah yeah bright yellow and blue yeah, yeah and I I didn't want like a boat T-shirt I wanted a motorcycle T-shirt and they had like one it was like you know black with the red stripe which yeah. kind of mess but you know it makes me wonder I mean they could right yeah they've got that new um, uh, retro racer what is that the XSR nine hundred yeah that yeah the that's one? the one based on the same platform the CP three engine and you think that they could probably do some sample dealerships in the U S or even around the world, but where they kind of focus on some of these special models 
right? And have right. some matching attire that goes with yeah. it. Kind of, kind of use that Harley slash Triumph template. Right. If I was going to have like a second bike, that would be an awesome second bike. Although it's the same exact engine. So I would literally just be riding a different looking version than the one I have. But it's so cool looking. I mean, that that would be one to have for DGR and for those kind of coffee runs, you know. It's it's made a lot of waves. I got I mean, yeah, I see it everywhere on YouTube now. Yeah, yeah. There's tons of articles and reviews of it. Yeah. Um, but it's a cool bike. I'm not even sure it's in the states though. I think they had something with the headlights not the right size or something. And they have, yeah, it does. It has that little. It's got a little slot. Little slot. Yeah. Which is cool because it gives it. Because I was at GP. I was at the, I dropped my bike off today at the dealership for a service and I didn't see. I didn't see any there, you know, of mm-hmm. that model. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard if it's coming to the states or not. Yeah, but um, back to back to the to the fashion aspect though, because I remember the first video I, I watched of um, Shade Tree Surgeon, mm-hmm. and he's a. If you don't know Shade Tree, you probably do. He's one of the bigger uh, motorcycle channels on YouTube. But the very first video I saw of him. He was doing a complete bash of the cafe racer, modern classic, typical, you know, stereotypical. Yeah. The the guy that's going and buying a Triumph and then buying all the matching clothes to go on it right. and riding to his local coffee yeah. shop, and it was hilarious. It, yeah, but I was guilty of a lot of that. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm purposely wearing the the, the Triumph the, branded shirt yeah. that I bought. Your ton up. And I'm sitting there watching, and I'm like, you know, it was it was good to watch that video because it was like, okay, you know, you have to be able to laugh at yourself sometimes. I don't, sometimes, I don't mind right? at all. Poke fun at me all you want. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, but, isn't that uh, part of the fun of motorcycles? Yeah, and at least you're riding, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, I don't make fun of anybody that rides. Even, I mean, there are guys that come to some events and they ride scooters, and and that's like it's like its own thing. And I, you know. I don't want to ride a scooter. I, you know, I prefer to have a little more power, but it does also look cool. And yeah. there's guys that do like classic Vespas and they, they rebuild them and stuff. And, and, uh, yeah, I like the reason why I went with like a modern classic versus just getting an old used bike is because I wanted to start, you know, right. Cause I'm not really mechanically inclined. You want all. to be able to ride to new Orleans and back. Yeah, exactly. I want to be able to, <laughs> I want to know that if I hop on it and decide to ride all the way to new Orleans and back, which I, I looked, I think it was only 600 and something. I think in the last episode, I said, oh, it was like 900 miles. It's it's like 650 or something like that. Each way, though. Each way, yeah, yeah. of course, each way. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I, I, don't want to, I don't want to be accused of exaggerating. <laughs> right, but still a 1,300-mile trip yeah, on a Bonneville. Yeah, on a Bonneville, yeah. But, you know, that's a good trip. It is. It was a good trip. Yeah, it was fun. That's like 10 times around England. Yeah, right. The circumference of it, anyway. Uh, it's an that island. might not be accurate either. I, I don't know. Don't yeah. don't look for us for accuracy. No, no. <laughs> Maybe the Isle of Man. I don't know how big these islands are. I've never been. Yeah. Um, but I think overall motorcycling in these subgenres, everybody's pretty accepting of others, right? I and think so. I mean, the only one is kind of the Harley gang. Yeah. I mean, now I. We had some friends that used to work at the Ducati dealership, and those guys, they actually do a, a great job of, of uh, they have like their own Ducati club, mm-hmm. you know, that's associated with the dealership. And I think they might even pay membership fees and stuff, which is kind of unusual. But they put on a lot of events for them. They do. They get track days. Um, they, they have lunches for them at the dealership and other places, and they, they do trips together. Um, but I think... At first, they, you know, when my friends were working there, I used to come along on those rides. Um, but I think now they've kind of made a rule where no non Ducatis, you know, <laughs> like so it's like oh, it, it's okay. exclusively it's, Ducati. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in the automotive area in the car world, there are some stereotypes for different types of people that own Audis and BMWs right. and things like that, um, Mustangs. Do you think that? Is the yeah, same in I motorcycles? mean, like somebody like Ducati is a premium brand. You know, it, it is a lot about like you're not driving that just because it has 200 horsepower or whatever. You're driving it because you want people to look at you and go, "Oh, look at the guy in the Ducati." Yeah, it just sounds cool saying Ducati. You know what I mean? It's and you, and you got your whole leather jacket, the yeah. red, your red jacket, and you know, and you got your Ducati branded boots on and. So who's worse, BMW owners or Ducati uh, owners? I don't know. I don't want to say worse. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was you that he said worse, not me. No, I, I honestly, I wanted the Ducati Multistrada V4 when it came out. That was the bike that I was looking at okay. before I bought the, the Tracer. And I test rode one, and it is absolutely amazing. It has the front and rear radar systems. It's got adaptive cruise control. Mm. And yeah, it does put out like 170 horsepower. It's got a better interval for service than the old ones used to. Um, but at the end of the day, it was it was close to 30 grand, you know. It's that's a chunk of change. That's a chunk of change. Yeah. Now, if I had like a much greater disposal income, I would definitely have bought it, you know, like, <laughs> but I don't, I don't. My plan was to keep both bikes that I had the Bonneville still at the time. And so that's why I bought the Tracer. It was almost half price. And, you know, it doesn't have 170 horsepower, but it has enough that if we were on a ride together, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know the difference between me. I mean, obviously we're not racing, but I mean, they can take off and I can stay with them. You know what I mean? Like, right. like you can go on a, you know, the street fighter V four, or you can go on a MT 10 from Yamaha, which costs, you know, $12,000 versus $28,000. And mm-hmm. they're essentially, you know, one makes 20 something more horsepower or whatever has a little bit more torque. Right. But is it really double, double the price, you know, triple the price? It's, it's hard to, like I said, if I was like a multimillionaire, I'd, yeah, I'll, I'll get to Ducati. So. Yeah, I'd love to have a Panigale yeah. myself. I don't know. I mean, one. yeah. See, so you, but you're you're back to your sport yeah. biking. You know, that's the thing. This is like fantasy garage we're doing right now. We're like, oh yeah, I want a I want a Harley touring bike, and I want I want a you know a Ducati uh, um, Panigale, and I'll have a Triumph Bobber in there so I can look cool on Saturdays. <laughs> And a gold wing, so I could take my wife and we yeah. could hit the mountains. Yeah. And the gold- I had a, I have an uncle and an aunt that used to, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they used to do um, the Rockies on a gold wing yeah. every year. That's great. Yeah. Really I cool see those stuff. people out, man. I mean, and those, obviously, those bikes are, they're bulletproof, you know, mm-hmm. they're comfortable, you know. What do you think of like those sound systems? It's, that's mainly a Harley guy thing that has, you know, they got the, three amps in there and the 27 speakers and you know you're i mean i I personally i like having the cardo in my helmet so i can i can hear my music and just me hear it you know is that a projection like you're like this is what i listen to and you need to listen to it too i'm one of those i'm one of those people those riders that i don't listen to anything oh yeah yeah that's i noticed that because we connected on our cardo and he kept he kept hitting the intercom button, which would turn my music off, and then I would hit it to, cl- to clear it, and then he would hit it again. He's like, hey, something happened. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to listen to my freaking music, no. and you keep, you keep hitting the button. <laughs> listen to me talk. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't listen to music. Um, I just like, I like the engine and the, just yeah. the atmosphere. I mean, every once in a while, I've got a three-quarter helmet you know, with a bubble screen on it, and I'll just throw that helmet on and go out and ride you know, versus having the music. Um, but I, I do, I do like having the, the ability to hear the music. And if you're using your, you know, your GPS, you can, right. you can hear the directions. So it's definitely helpful. I know a lot of those guys too, like bike nights, they'll, you know, the, the guys that have the big sound systems right. in their full baggers, um, they'll, they'll crank them up, crank them up at bike nights. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they, and they drown out the poor guy with the, you know, $200 PA system that's yeah. trying to like, Sing for his call, living, you know, or call out his, you know, call out his uh, his uh, numbers, you know, to win to for win the raffle. Yeah, the yeah. raffle numbers. Yeah, you can tell we've we've been through this a few times. Yeah, there's yeah, but um, here's something I just thought of too, kind of going back to the the fashion of motorcycling, is social media, right? Right. Um, of course, we're on social media. You can check us out at Tampa Crow and at Two Wheel Troubadour and at Moto BS on Moto BS Instagram. Po- Moto BS Podcast. Moto BS Podcast on Which, on if you look Instagram. at it right now, there's. I just figured out today how to put our profile picture up. So, oh, awesome! <laughs> cool. So we haven't we haven't really uh, we'll, we'll upload some videos and stuff on there. But. Yeah, our full marketing program hasn't really kicked yeah, we, off we haven't yet. Really, but, yeah, we're we're in the uh, the beginning stages here. Yeah. So, but you know there are there are. Um, a few things that I've that come to mind, and you mentioned MT MT tens from Yamaha. Right. I'll never forget this one picture. I think it was a video actually. Um, it was like seven or eight MT ten riders. Mm-hmm. Every one of the bikes was black. They had them all parked in a row 
was it a press launch? <laughs> no, no, this was just a writer group. And they had them all parked in a row perfectly, perfectly aligned. Every writer was dressed in sport gear, but all in black. Black yeah. helmet, black riding jacket, it's the black dark, pants. It's the dark side of Japan. That's literally their, uh, their tag. Yeah. That's and what. they're all sitting on the bikes and they're all facing, you know, yeah. facing the camera. It's a good hooligan bike. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, it, it, there's an element of cringe to me sometimes when I see it. I get it. I support it. It's part of their motorcycling, who they are. It's part of their persona. But isn't there a little cringe to that? I, I isn't guess. it a bit I, posery? I, I guess. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I, don't, I hate it could, it could people. It could just be a coincidence. They might have all just, you know. But just as bad as are the... The modern classic Triumph guys at the coffee shop posing he, he with He keeps their... saying just as bad and worse. That's not me saying that. <laughs> you can add him whenever. <laughs> yeah. I support it all. I yeah. really do. I'm just bringing it up as I mean, topics. it's okay to poke fun, obviously. The, the reason why they're stereotypes, you know, because yeah. they're true, you know. <laughs> or at least partially true. Not for everybody, but definitely for some of the people. I guess my biggest tip is at least get gear that fits you. Yeah. If if your jacket's too big for you, oh, I thought you meant aesthetically. <laughs> Safety wise, aesthetically wise, at least at least get a jacket that fits. I mean, that's right? another thing. I I do have a few friends that ride Harleys, and I've been out with them, and they either wear no helmet or one of those you know skull cap helmets. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the women that I've ridden with, they they literally just they're more about the fashion. They're wearing a tank top and high heel boots and. Like I said, they look great, but they haven't been in a slide, you know. God forbid. I mean, fingers crossed, y'all never have to slide. You know what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. I'm I mean, all about the gear, man. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not like so gear heavy. Like I've been on rides where it's gotten so hot, and my even my my mesh jacket because when we live here in Florida, it's and the humidity in the summer. Because some guys just won't even ride. It's funny because Florida is the opposite. Right. R- riding season is the winter in Florida. I'm, I'm on all these Facebook groups, and they're like, "Got to put the bike away for the winter." Yeah. And I was like, "No, finally time to take the bike out." You know, it's funny how that works down here. But yeah, you're you're out there and you're doing a beach run or something, and you're not going very fast, and it's you know 90 degrees and the humidity is 90. percent I might I might throw the jacket back in the bag. Yeah. You know? I keep the helmet on. I mean, if you look online, you're going to see a video of me like riding over the seven mile bridge without my helmet. But that was literally, I took it off to to do the video, you know what I mean? And put it back on like right when we got back to the other side. I I would probably ride. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been like where it's just, you know, especially if you do one of these long rides, like when I rode to New Orleans or whatever, and I was doing back roads up through the panhandle. But while I was still in Florida, I got up there and at a certain point I just, my neck started hurting. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I didn't have my, my Arai helmet yet. I was going with something a little heavier and, uh, I just, I took the helmet off and strapped it to the back seat and just rode without a helmet. And it was nice. I was on back roads, you know, mm-hmm. and obviously anything can happen at any time, but you know, then I, I rolled into Alabama and I was just riding along the beach, you know, and I was just like, I wonder if Alabama has a helmet law. So I pulled over and I Googled it and yeah, they got a helmet law. So hmm. real quick, put the helmet back on. I was surprised how many states don't have helmet laws. Yeah. Injuries though on motorcycles. You know, one thing that I found is the better shape I am in personally, the better I ride. So there's a correlation there, especially because I'm on a bike that where you need more core strength. Mm. People are always talking about, oh, you know, I don't like the sport bikes because I'm always, I'm, my wrist gets sore and everything. Well, you're not supposed to ride on, on, you know, all your weight's not supposed to be on yeah, your wrist. Yeah, you're supposed to be supporting it with your core. Yeah. yeah, it's more core. And I have to remind myself because it's that whole, it's fatigue sets in. And yeah. the more, the longer you ride, the more weight you start putting on your yeah, wrist. even on my and, bike, which is very neutral, I do try to keep my back straight most mm-hmm. of the time and, and shoulders back, you know. And I'll, I'll change positions and, you know. It helps having a cruise control. You can put your right hand down for a little bit. And yeah, I wish mine had cruise control. Yeah, there's a lot of things I wish mine had though. I mean, I'm starting to wish you had a second bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hina, if you watch this, you know, he, he needs a second bike. She told me 
I forgot exactly what she said. I'll have to go back and ask her. She said you, you could trade in that challenger and get yourself a second bike. <laughs> There's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> get it, see, get, you could trade that in for a Prius and then get the second bike. See, the whole thing with the Thruxton, though, is like I, I can never you can't see get rid myself of it. parting with no, it. No. I mean, that was my plan with the Bonneville. I wanted to keep it forever. And then what happened was I got the Tracer and I and just never wanted to ride the Bonneville. <laughs> At a certain point, I'm like, all right, I'm paying for insurance on this bike. It's just sitting in my garage. Now I have to take it out at least once a week to keep it going, you right. know, keep the battery charged and keep the gas going through it. Yeah. And and I didn't really want to ride it. I wanted to ride I wanted to ride the tracer all the time. So you gotta keep it insured. Yeah. You know, keep the tag, you know, registered up to date. Exactly. So I sold I sold it to our friend Bobby. What's Extra up, Bobby? shout out to Bobby. Um we're gonna see him this Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah. At our our monthly month, meetup. Monthly meetup. At uh, if you're in Tampa, come out to Grand Cathedrals on the first Sunday of the month. That's the day we do the the meetup at around noon. Yeah, and, yeah. Bring your bike or drive a car or whatever. You know, it's cool. Yeah, in the comments section, let us know if you have uh, yeah meetups. Have, yeah meetups or if you have any questions for us that you want us to answer on the podcast. Oh, that'd be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah put them put them in the comments. We'll do a little a little question and answer episode. Yeah, and you know. Because I have all the answers. I would say try to remain positive, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Take your best shot. But we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear comments about the show, um, what you're writing, if you've got writer groups that you meet up with. If you don't, you should, you know. And it doesn't have to be just local, any, anywhere, right? Our writer groups, most people drive their cars to it anyway. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm Not most people, but... <laughs> So there are a few people that it, I, I'm, I'm I've done guilty it. of it. Everybody's done it. Yeah, yes. everybody's done it. Yeah, you look out there and you're like, "Is it going to rain?" Yeah, like, I, I don't care about rain too much, but I also don't want to hang out wet. So yeah, <laughs> like I'll ride in the rain all day if that's the point of the day is to ride. But if I'm going somewhere to hang out, then I don't want to get there and be wet. You know, and also wearing rain gear. I mean, I have rain gear with me if I'm on a cross country ride. I'm going to put the rain gear on. Mm-hmm. It also is a good um, backup for insulating you t- against the cold. Yeah. That ride I just did where I was up in the mountain, the, the morning I left uh, North Carolina, it was like 36 degrees. All right. That's a little chilly. It's pretty chilly. Yeah. So I actually put the, it was a perfectly clear day, but I put the rain gear on and then put my jacket over it and mm-hmm. I was, I was comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I have to get some, it's on my to-do list. Now that I finally got uh, uh, some, some side bags. Yeah. Yeah, because it but folds up tight. Thing. You can you can put it. In. I have like a one of the zip up suits. It's like a solid. You step into it, you know, like a onesie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think I paid a hundred bucks for it at Cycle Gear. Hmm. What's up, Cycle yeah, Gear? You want to sponsor that. us? No. Right. What's up, Cycle Gear? <laughs> um, S- send Sean a rain suit. We could try out. <laughs> probably a medium. Yeah. 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 I got to get some rain gear. Um, I don't mind riding in the rain. There are some people that just refuse to ride in the rain. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will ride in any weather as long as I'm prepared for that weather. Yeah. Yeah. And same with cold or heat or rain or whatever. Obviously, if it's icy or if you can't see, I've been in the mountains before where it's gotten so foggy, you can barely see the car in front of you. That I won't ride in. You know, I mean, until you get down, you have to ride in it. But yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's happened to me before. Where I, I literally turned a corner and just hit a fog bank and you're like, oh, my God. And there's nowhere to stop. You're on a mountain. There's there's no there's no shoulder. You know you're following. A, thank you know you're thankful the car is there now. At first you're like curse this car making me go slow, and then you're like thank God the car's there so now I can follow it to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And in Florida in the summer you are going to ride in rain. If you ride a motorcycle at some point in the summer you're gonna it's gonna catch up with you. Yeah, because it rains every single day pretty much. You know, and if you go out for a a, even a morning ride by the time you get home it's gonna be it's gonna rain on you yeah luckily it doesn't last too long though no. you, you'll get hit for a minute and right ride right out of it it's not bad no but i've been in some downpours um that were just like torrential downpours where you couldn't see three feet in front of you yeah no it's tough and you know not having a windshield wiper and you're just you're just taking your hand and rubbing it across your right yeah and then also you start to get fogged up even if you got the the, pin lock the on pin it. lock in there what happens I, I, we, we both wear glasses so so maybe the pin lock works and this is not fogged up but now my glasses are fogged up so then you do that thing where you crack it open a little bit and then some rain comes in then you close it and then it fogs back up and you crack it back open and yeah i that trip that we keep talking about when i went to new orleans the morning i woke up to go home 
it was like there was just a big dark green on the radar you know the entire louisiana was covered with a with a storm and i just mm. just put the rain gear on and i literally just rode like seven hours straight in the rain and i was i have some videos of it somewhere maybe i'll send them over you can put them on the b-roll but it was it was literally just going over bridges and tunnels and all that stuff just pouring rain yeah you know? well that's that's why i like wearing full uh face helmets yeah because I feel it, it's like being in this. It's kind of strange to describe it. It's like being in this little apartment. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're in this little thing, and especially like in the rain, you get that that feeling of oh, I'm protected. I'm drying here. It's like my own little yeah yeah my own little world inside here. Yeah. Some people get claustrophobic with them, but right. I, I actually like it. Yeah, I, like I know the some feeling. of the some of the people that do wear those those skull cap helmets. A lot of them will have a second helmet if they've got a big Harley and they've got that extra side case there. They'll have a some of them will have a full face helmet in there just in case it rains or whatever. Right. What I don't get is like if they ride like that all the time and a lot of them do, you know, freeway miles. I mean, I have sometimes I'll get home and there'll be just gigantic bugs smashed all over my windscreen, you know, all yeah. over the Are they just eating those bugs or you know what I mean? Like are they hitting their eyeglass? I mean, I've had one literally where I've had the the visor going down the expressway. I've had the visor propped up and I, I've seen a giant bug and it's doing that thing where you you see it do like that circle and all of a sudden it's like plop. And it hit me, like, literally it hit my glasses and exploded inside of my helmet. Well, I've had them. I tell you, I, I literally just pulled over inside of the veterans and yeah. took my helmet off. And I was like, I took a rag out of my pocket. And I'm like, ah. I've been hit by some big bugs that I thought cracked my visor. Yeah. I couldn't I mean, imagine me hitting the face with it. Yeah, like you're just going with no, especially love bug season, which thankfully I haven't had one in that's a while. That's another Florida thing. That's yeah. another Florida thing, yeah. Thanks, University of Florida. But we do ride year round. Yeah, we do. We, yeah. It's you know you got to take the bad with the good I guess. Right. Love bugs, hurricanes, boring straight roads, <laughs> boring straight roads. Now there's there's a topic. Yeah, that's the only reason why I would want to live. I mean, if we just lived in North Florida, then it wouldn't be such a long run to get to the mountains to the to the coast. Yeah, yeah. Does that affect your decision in in what bike you ride, the roads? Um. Would you have a different bike if the roads were mountainous, hilly, and curvy, and fun? Oh, I mean, the Tracer is a blast up in the mountains. So, yeah. I mean, I took the Bonneville up there a few times, and it's, you know, it's there's a lot more a lot more grabbing the brake on the Bonneville, you know, versus on that Tracer. You just downshift and just yeah. accelerate right through the turn and, you know, a little more confident leaning on it. It's not so heavy. The steering's a little, right. a little sharper, yeah. But um, but I don't look as cool when I go to the coffee shop, you know. <laughs> like right back to that whole thing, you know. To other sport tour guys, though, maybe yeah, you look yeah, really cool. <laughs> I mean, you, you could have the adventure rider uniform, which is like the Gore-Tex suit, you know, and the right. They all look exactly the same when you see them, and they got the big bright reflective band around the chest, and you know. What do they What, what do they buy all the time? The um. Clem's a big, Clem, yeah. That's a big. Brand it is. It is. Yeah. In that in that genre. K L I M. Is that how you pronounce it, Clem? I, I don't know. I can't afford it. <laughs> I think it'd be climb with an e, right? I if I, if it had an e, it'd be. I climb. feel like it's climb though for some reason. Oh really? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Don't come here for information. <laughs> we just we just guess. We just guessing. We do our best at guessing. Yeah. Um. I don't know. You know. I. I used to laugh, because I'm good at laughing at the stereotypes out there, but I used to laugh at the guys on the Jixers, you know, the spray-painted Jixers that obviously were or, stolen or they, three or times. Or they've glued fur to it. Yeah, the fur thing, because that reminds me, too, back to the social media, there was a big trend with, um, like, doing the the helmet Oh yeah, yeah. Furry things on the helmet. Yeah, they like still the sell those. Yeah. Cookie Monster on the right, helmet and stuff. Right. That those things made me cringe. Oh, I mean, I I just laugh. I just yeah. laugh at those. I, it's not my not my if thing. They had one that looked like a red panda. I, I love red pandas. I would wear that. Yeah. Red panda. Yeah. So if you're if you're out there and you're designing furry helmet lids, <laughs> <laughs> red pandas are great. Look look them up. Just go on Instagram, type in red panda. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Not to be confused with a giant panda. The no, black no, and white they're, they're basically like a red raccoon, and they're right, just they're super like cute. This, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that yeah. big. 
Yeah. That was like my one goal when we went to Japan. I had to see a red panda. I'll put a picture up on the... Yeah. No, I, I've got a, <laughs> I got a picture with me and the panda I can send you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I get the guys on the Jixers now with the extended swing arms here in Florida. Yeah. Um, because we don't have the curvy roads. So why not ride a bike that's all about Make straight s- line acceleration? Staple. Yeah. Right? I guess. How fast do you need to go? <laughs> Don't answer that. No, I mean, I, if I was still in my twenties and thirties, yeah. I mean, you know, you could, you could even on the Druxen, you could do an easy one twenty. You know, like, yeah. Maybe not quite get there as fast, but yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was looking. I was looking at uh, like MT ten numbers versus uh, like a Ducati Street Fighter or whatever. And the MT ten. Zero to one hundred in six seconds. Like, well, like even when I was and, when I was a kid, like a, a fast car, like a you know five zero Mustang, was zero to sixty in five. I mean, yeah. it's, this is doing that in a hundred. Right, it's crazy. Well, my Thruxton uh, three point one is the official zero to sixty yeah. on it. Yeah, you, but if you try to do that yourself, you're not going to get that launch like those professionals do. <laughs> probably, yeah. I don't know if I could pull off, but but it probably wouldn't be. I'd probably be under four. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's still well. It's got a lot of torque for a small yeah. bike too. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. I mean, it is a big engine, actually, a twelve hundred. Yeah, I think it's got like. I think that actually that kind of warped my perception of motorcycles when I I bought that nine hundred uh, street cup because I was like, I didn't think nine hundred was a big engine. I thought it was a small engine. Right. And then I'm reading all these articles about you know leader bikes, and I was like, what's the big deal? My bike's almost a leader bike. But then it only made forty something horsepower, so I was I was really confused by the whole. You know, when you first get into it, and you don't understand the compression and the different displacements. Displacement. Yeah. You know, like I got that twelve hundred Bonneville. Like a twelve hundred is pretty big, but it still doesn't make that much horsepower compared to my tracer, which is a nine hundred. Right. I know there there are guys of you know when I when I stop for gas or at a, at a bike night or something they'll be like ah oh, what, what size is your th- oh is that a six hundred yeah because it I had people pull up next to me when I was on the street cup and they go what's that like a six hundred it's like it's a nine hundred like what because when I like- tell them mine's a twelve hundred they're like oh wow because they're thinking leader bike four cylinder yeah you know, there's that so they're equating it to that right that's what but I'm it's- saying like that that's what happened to me when I first got back into motorcycle and I was so confused by all the numbers. You know, you don't realize until you you start actually reading articles and, and reviews. And Understanding, go, oh, the, yeah, the, I understand now. There's a difference. The configuration versus displacement, yeah, right. And, and you know, these Harley engines are massive, and they a lot of them don't. They only make you know 99 horsepower or whatever, but they have 160 pound feet of torque or whatever. Right. I mean, they're they're crazy torque. So, um, so it's because you, you know the horsepower is your top speed anyway. So what do you what are you going to do top speed on a Harley? You know, you're not going to want to go 130. Right. Although some of the Harley people I've ridden with, they, they, they will stay right at a hundred, you know? Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what is our hurry? <laughs> yeah. I had a neighbor in Texas, um, that I rode with who had a, you know, like a stage three road King. Yeah. And, and uh, it's that like, thing would move. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm literally going slow down. I can't hear your music. You know? <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was a surprisingly fast bike for, yeah, yeah. No, they, they get up 800 pounds. That's a the thing. They also weigh a ton. Yeah. yeah. But it, it would go. Um, yeah. What we were talking about. I don't know. I think that's, I think it's another episode in the books. What do you think? Yeah. I could talk all night. Oh, that's, uh, well, that's what we'll do when we turn this <laughs> off. We'll just keep talking. Just keep, keep talking about motorcycles. Yeah. Um, what do we have coming up? We've got we've got our ride that we mentioned, our, our group ride. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a ride. It's a meetup. It's a meetup, yeah. Sometimes sometimes we'll mix in a... I mean, obviously, by the time this comes out, it's going to be irrelevant anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We try to do at least a couple of um, meetups or rides every month with our group, you know. And then we've got, like we mentioned in the first episode, we got the Distinguished Gentleman's yeah, Ride. Yeah, that's coming up this month. And, well, yeah, in May. Yep. And uh, actually tomorrow, I mean tomorrow, uh, Sunday's meetup, which like I said, it's not going to be relevant to this podcast, but it's going to be DGR themed. So we're talking about, you know, dressing, dressing to impress. A little dapper. A little dapper, yeah. I have a clip-on bow tie. Yeah. yeah and you're going to let me borrow your... your uh, your fancy retro, new retro helmet. Amazon helmet. Yeah. Set in the listing. DOT. 
D-O-T in quotes. <laughs> it doesn't well, say it on the helmet, though. It, it shouldn't is... really. Well, that's the good thing about Florida. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I just don't wear it up in the Georgia. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah. And we'll see you again next week. Moto BS. Moto BS. Brian and Sean. And, and all the BS we can right. shovel. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool deal. Get all right. Seven. All right. See you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.